And now, it's time for Ted Nugent's Spirit Campfire with John Brankus. It's the physics of spirituality with attitude. Right here, John. By the way, welcome to the Ted Nugent Spirit by John Brankus. What we've got here, ladies and gentlemen, is, you know, we're talking about the physics of spirituality with attitude. When I come from Detroit, the streets, not so mean streets of Detroit, you know what really, really emphasizes the attitude? Having no. balls, having balls. spine, having mm -hmm. tenacity, being the man in the arena, letting your scrotum swing from coast to coast, knocking down tall buildings in a single bound. John, happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy scrotum day. Because yeah, but, but no G, John, every day is scrotum day. Every day is scrotum. There's no one on the planet who says the word scrotum more than you. That is the truth. I've actually. Well, you know why? Out. You know why? Because you know I have a Tyrannosaurus Rex scrotum, and I put it to good use. The wise use. Conservation is the wise use. And I'd like to think my my hearing aids keep beeping. Does that mean I'm running out of battery life? Anyhow, here's a sword given to me by yeah. a hero of the U.S. Navy SEALs. I am in my Swampland, Michigan barn, John, and I got Coco and Sadie and Happy here. Shemaine just went upstairs as she uh, helped me get organized here. But happy, happy August 10th. Is it, John Brankus, are you expecting me to believe that you're on the Spirit Campfire with Ted Newton on August 10th, 2020? Really, you expect us to believe this? Do, do, do you think it's crazy? Dude, 2020 has been the craziest year ever. I think part of it is that we've gone through a time warp. It's like yesterday was February, and now we're in August, and we might as well be in Thanksgiving. Because it's actually, just actually, crazy. John, John, you are, is your name Ed McMahon? Are, yeah, am I is. Johnny Carson? I don't because know. I, the, I don't know who's the Ed McMahon and who's the Johnny Carson. But we'll, we'll, well, we'll have, believe me, everybody watching I knows. Know. But anyhow, when you mention things like that, actually, I'm going to tell you, I have these miracle ears. Um, <laughs> Hold on, and, on and, they're, and they're not Hold working. On. They're Hold not. On. I can't hear shit without them. One you know? of us and, has a hearing aid, <laughs> and one of us doesn't. I can't hear without him. I, I also have two brand new knees. You know, John, we were talking earlier about scrotum. Well, because I've <laughs> swung mine so valiantly for so many years that yeah. my knees and my ears uh, need all the help they can get. But let me just say, I am, I'll be 72 years old here shortly yeah. uh, during, the, during the hunting season. And uh, can we start off tonight's campfire, like I need your permission, but let's start off tonight's campfire celebrating healthy choices in life. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm funny because I'm a funny man. I, I was raised by Richard Pryor and Sam Kinison and uh, Robin Williams and Rodney Dangerfield. So I know that humor will, will cleanse your soul. But I'm 72 this year, and I know I have bags under my eyes. Those are ammo bags. Um, because I got up at five o'clock this morning. I am so excited about the fall coming on, even though it's not fall yet, but I, I dream. And I already see ducks in the swamps out here. I'm deer, deer all over the property here. They're, they're, they have fawns everywhere. I'm sure yeah. the herd has doubled since last year. And uh, we got the woodchucks and the raccoons. I'm trapping the raccoons to try to save some of the duck and the quail eggs and the pheasant eggs because they're marauders. And plus they spread disease, so I'm a conservationist. But let's talk momentarily because we have a lot of people, by the way, a lot of people, thank you, a lot of people, for tuning into the campfire. The response we get, do you do you get the feedback like I do? Do do we mean do I get the feedback? I'm the I'm the one who's monitoring the whole thing. William, listen to me. The feedback that we're getting is William Wood says, Thank God for the spirit campfire, five days till squirrel season in Indiana. Yes, oh. squirrel season. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe five days for you, but according to Happy Sadie and Coco. It's open here, believe me. I We have yeah. these red squirrels running around the swamp here, around our barns, and they're destroying the gutters. They're destroying the roof. So happy Sadie and Coco and I got out yeah. the uh, the uh, Browning 22 with some bird shot. And we actually, it's actually like we're big game hunting. We built a blind next to the horse barn, and we just wait for the little rascals to go by, and I, and then happy Sadie and Coco fetch them for me. But anyhow, go ahead, John. Go, go on, listen. Now, you know, because we're making great choices, first of all, you see uh, Ted's guitar, Great White Buffalo. I want to say hi to everybody in the chat rooms, especially on Facebook. 
Um, we, tell me where you're watching the show from tonight because we have a worldwide audience. Tons of people from Michigan, tons of people from Alabama, tons of people from Georgia. We got California. We've got uh, Greencastle, Indiana, all over the place. And Ted, what we need everybody to understand is you got to hit the thumbs up. You got to hit the heart like crazy. And let's give these people something early on in the show. A lot of times you play songs at the end. You were playing for me before we went on. I wish everybody could see what, what you do before we actually go on the air. Because when Ted Nugent's warming up, it's unlike anything you've seen. Well, first of all, you know, we're getting ready here. I brought my little laptop down to the barn. I got this microphone here and I set up my amp in the in the shop here where I work on my trucks and I sharpen my arrowheads. In fact, since we're doing the shows for the rest of the hunting season, almost till Thanksgiving, John, from our sacred swamp here in the Uncle Ted's Sporting Goods Emporium, I'm going to give you a tour of all the bows and arrows that go back to the 1950s that I still have. But yes, it's not just before we start the Spirit Campfire. I do my chores, I run my trap line, I work on my bows and arrows, I've been working on the targets, putting up tree stands. Every two or three hours I come in here and I grab these magnificent birdlands. This is a custom, one of a kind birdland made by the Gibson Custom Shop. And it is called the Great White Buffalo, and it's got this beautiful artwork. Is that, is that reading straight? Because I see it backwards where I am. No, it's reading? straight. Is it? Yep. I, but anyhow, I, I got these licks. I'm not going to play the new licks because they're not copyrighted yet. But I think if ever, anybody ever penned the campfire songs, moi, I believe yeah. it's the scrotum swimmer. Anyhow, this is a song called Good Friends and a Bottle of Wine. And I don't drink, but I started drinking wine around the campfire with my brothers and my family. And then when Shemaine and I got married 30. 31 years ago, the poor woman. Um, we started drinking red wine with our venison. And this song is a, an ode that I don't drink, but if you want to drink, I love you. If you want to have wine, a beer is better for you than a sweet soda, right? A beer has might have some redeemable quality. My brothers, everybody drinks beer, but here's sure. a song, Good Friends and a Bottle of Wine. <laughs> Do a little social experiment here because I'm. I am talking. a social experiment. Yes. You are a social experiment. This I'll, I'll tell you who's the social experiment is the audience because the audience keeps growing and growing and growing and everyone keeps saying, "Hey, play a little stranglehold early." We'll tell everybody about the show. Uh, will you just play a little bit of stranglehold just very, because? Very listen difficult. now, listen. I did only on one condition. 
Everybody's got to give a thumbs up, a heart, and tell all your friends about the Spirit Campfire right now. Bleh. Tell everybody tell right what. now about it. You know, playing a little bit of stranglehold is almost like me having a little bit of sex. It just, it's, it's just not natural. But I will give you a taste because we only have an hour. Plus, I'm going to tell everybody right now, we're celebrating guitars. We're celebra celebrating independence and rugged individualism, being the best that you can be, samurai, positive energy, positive piss and vinegar. We have a musical wizard coming on shortly. His name is Dave Amato. And Dave Amato was the world revered guitar player for Ario Speedwagon. And he was in my band on the Little Miss Dangerous and the Penetrator Tour. Dave is just an amazing artist, an amazing musician, songwriter, vocalist, performer, and just a damn good guy. So I will give you a taste. Go to Uncle Ted 2020. Is that right, Uncle Ted 2020? Uncle Ted 2020. Com? Herbert, throw that up there if you got it. Because that is that's how you go to register Uncle Ted 2020.com because I'm going to give a really gory detailed review of where my grunting grinding rhythm and blues Motor City guitar style comes from and nothing says it like stranglehold and this is just a precursor you see the floating bridge on the Gibson Birdland isn't that pretty so I've got room to play back here that's why I'm able to do things <laughs> But doing that, I get the meat of my hand on that, that bridge, so I get a that comes right from Bo Diddley. You get a little bit more than you do actually. It's a combination. Nothing says it. I attribute Stranglehold's entire style from my eternal years of playing Bo Diddley. And I just get an open A string. I get that A against the A. And I muff it. But every note is semi-muffed, minimally muffed, a little more muffed, less muffed. So you get the... Now that little lick, when I play the ninth chord, you notice the difference if I hit it with the pick, it's real edgy. When I play that ninth chord, I, that's why it has a creamier tone. It go from hard edge, I play it with the finger so there's no hard edge hitting it. So that whole lick is just open A, Bo Diddley on back straps. I've always had a standing offer that if anybody can play that lick perfectly, I will get on stage and be rude to them. <laughs> and there's only one guy I've ever seen play it that really gets my stranglehold mojo going. And he's our guest tonight, and he's Dave Amato. So, Dash, bring in my blood brother, my oh. sonic bombast, historical rhythm and blues rock and roll scream machine, Mr. Dave Amato. Dave, welcome to the campfire, man. Hi, Ted. How you doing? I'm doing so good, it's stupid in spite of this crazy world around us. How are you? Oh, my God. Ah, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm hanging in there. It's well, good. this is my buddy John Brink. Is John, this is my buddy Dave Amato. Hey, John. Dave Amato, we are so honored to have you here. I hope you have your guitar with you because Ted just keeps raving about you. We've all heard your, your music for years. If you don't, that's okay. But our audience is screaming for you to play some guitar tonight. Oh, Jesus. Really? Okay. Well, Dave, when, Dave, when did we first... I mean, I was out in L.A., I think I was doing pre-production, and was it 84 for the Little Miss Dangerous album? 85. 85. 1985. And, 
And I, I was looking for a guy to jam and collaborate with, and somebody told me about this Dave Amato dude down the road with some fine-ass blonde singing in his band. So I went out to check the fine-ass blonde and the guitar player. That's right. And uh, I hooked up with the guitar player, not the fine-ass blonde, because the music made me do it. So, Dave, first of all, I was born in 1948. When were you born? 53. So you're a young man. You respect your elders. I love that about David. I do respect um, it's you. I respect, yes. Definitely. But but when you grew up, so we basically grew up in the vapor trail of Les Paul. He just invented the damn thing. I raved, and I had Billy Gibbons and Tommy Shaw and Vic Johnson and Ricky Medlock. I've had so many, yeah, so many killer musicians. But give us another example from Dave Amato. What got you, wh why you couldn't not go after the guitar? What were your influences when you were born? Oh, my God. Um... Well, it just um, like Elvis Presley, Hound Dog. Just, I, I have no idea. It got into my blood, my soul. I just, a jailhouse rock. Right? Jail, jail, you know, just. I did that with ZZ Top. <laughs> So you notice, John, you notice, John, yeah. that every killer guitar player, yeah. it's it's like, it's not like we went, you know, I might enjoy playing the guitar. Let, maybe, maybe I might. We we couldn't stop ourselves. That describes your attitude, right, Dave? It just, it just came in. I, I don't know. I don't know where it came from, but I, I think, uh, as far as I remember, it was Hound Dog, you know, just doing, sure. doing, 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 doing whatever, whatever that Ooh. tone was, or, you know, on, uh, it's just, it just gripped me. I just, went, Ted, I gotta, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta do this. I got Ted, our, our room is going nuts saying they want to see uh, a guitar in Dave's hand. If he has oh. an acoustic or an electric around okay. All right. Wait a minute. the room's going nuts. They're like, come on. We got to see this instead of the mouth guitar. We want to see the guitar. Oh, all right, I got you, I got you. you know, you know, John, I, I've seen Dave perform so many times, not only just because he and I did hundreds of concerts together. And it was just yeah. an absolute joy. I always rave about the caliber of virtuosos that I'm surrounded with and the fun factor. Number The number one drive and what Dave's identifying with the, the incredible first wave of electric guitar dominated music, yep. it literally grabbed you by the balls. In fact, my song, the music made me do it goes um it grabbed me by the balls when i heard the blues chuck berry bo diddley little richard too the music made me do it not a damn thing i can do so when i would watch dave perform i see all my favorite guitar players do the same thing they got a shitty grin on their face they're into it their body is literally be bopping in total harmony with the music that they're creating and playing with a, a world-renowned band like Ario Speedwagon. Dave, has it been like 30 years or something? It's 31 years. 31 years. Yeah, 31 years. Okay, cool. So play, play, uh, play the, the lick to Hound Dog. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that damn, mic, that damn mic is cutting out. But bottom line, oh. Dave, in, in 2020 or in 2019, every year with Ario, every night with me, isn't it true that there's only so much real estate? I mean, the real estate starts here and it stops there. Yeah. But, but you can take those foundational boogie-woogie and rhythm and blues licks, honky-tonk licks, and they're in Ario music, aren't they? Oh, uh, sure, sure. It's, it's just, you know, uh, the, the late Gary Richrath, I mean, he was, he was a, you know, he was an excellent guitar player, rock, he was a rock player, you know. Kevin's more, more folky, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of folk, folk rock kind of, but Gary, you know, had the, had the Les Paul through Marshall. There you go, you know, just made it fucking rock. <laughs> you think so when you when you're playing i noticed when you're playing ario songs that you've been recording with them but when you play those earlier songs that gary richrath really he imprinted his signature on them i i see and john this is a, a condition of a of a of a, a a conscientious musician that pays homage 
to the song, the identity, the pulse, yep. the, the image of the song. And that's what you do, Dave. And you do such a great job. So you, we've talked about it. You make you make it sound as real as the first time I saw Ario Spiegel in Champaign, Illinois in 1971. Oh, that's awesome. That's, uh, thank you. That, that's uh, Coming from you, that's, uh, that's really awesome. I try to, you know, I, if I did something different, they'd be going, what's he playing? You know, they, they all know the songs. Everybody knows the the, the most of the solos, you know, but I, I don't want to divert from that. I mean, you know, it was some great stuff he did, you know, but if I can stretch out on certain songs, you know, uh, then I do it. Then I, I, you know, I throw me into it, but I just want to pay, you know, homage to, to Gary with the, he played, it was a good guitar player, you know, and, and you know, ride right, the storm out is, is basically right. <laughs> where they got that leak from yeah <laughs> <laughs> doesn't sound familiar to me right <laughs> you know what i mean uh, sure. come on that is but you know what's funny when i play that lick that c chord i'm not, i'm two and a half step down but i i quiver it like a saxophone <laughs> That hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I got a half step guitar here. <laughs> so, Dave, tell tell uh, uh, everybody out there. I know millions of people have come and seen Ario Speedwagon because you guys are like workaholics. And that's another thing John and I emphasize. And before I started saying it, I don't know if anybody ever really honestly or adequately acknowledged the work ethic of killer musicians. I bet you Kevin Cronin and the guys, I bet you guys practice and the schedules that we keep, you know, you're, we're getting old today, but isn't it true that when you get ready to go out there and play those songs, every night's like the first time, isn't it? Oh, I, I, absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, 31 years, you know, you've been doing it for like, forever. And, and, but I, I see you on stage with a smile on your face playing Cat Scratch Fever that you did in the 70s. And it's just like, we're, little, we're still little kids with yeah. these, these things, you know? It's just, uh, it's like when I first uh, you know, heard Hound Dog, I, I mean, I feel the same way when I get on stage and play REO songs or, or whatever, or, you know? Extreme. So a guy that's so tuned in, and the guy that's tuned in like you and healthy, I mean, you've been clean and sober. We've always talked about that you got to take good care of yourself if you're going to pay respect to music and the pain and the pain ticket buyers. That's the number one job. Sure. But in the crazy world of rock and roll, there's not many of us that defied this silly thing called peer pressure. Tell us about, I mean, you were a young kid when you started playing. Um, how did you approach that how did you stand in defiance of what you knew just made people drool and stupid i mean of course you know when you're a kid you're you're young and stupid you know you, you try a couple of couple of things. i'm young and stupid right now <laughs> i know you are you look good too by the way <laughs> you look young as ever um you know you, you try stupid things when you're a teenager or you know whatever but i i just i i i mean i didn't do it very much but you know when you drank or something i, I didn't like my feet off the ground I just did not, did not like the feeling of not being me, you know, and, and as I, I mean, I didn't do it a lot and, and hardly at all, but I just didn't like the feeling of it. And, and my mother, my, my, my mother and father, you know, uh, when I was a kid, they let me drink. They, they weren't like strict, like, oh, you can't drink. You can't do this. You know, they said, have a beer because I'm an Italian family. You know, they drink wine and, and some beer. So they, they always said, hey, if you want to have a beer, man. You know, go go have a beer. Even at my teenage years, drink a beer. But I didn't. I so there was no restriction on that. I could have one if I wanted it. But I try to go like, eh, I don't like it. You know, I never liked it. I never had the urge to do that ever, ever. Dave, so, yeah. Dave, I, what I really love is you know, in terms of being a master musician. I mean, you're somebody who has really honed your craft. Ted keeps wanting to talk about being out of body playing on stage. And I'm a musician as well, obviously not nearly as good as you guys are. But for me, you know, I pick up my guitar, I play, and time just disappears. When you're playing in front of giant audiences, I mean, are, do you even, can you even think about what you're doing? Or are you just far too in the moment and out of body? You can, you know, you can think of what, you, what you're doing, you know, uh... But you know, if you play it for a long time, like like Ted has or me with Ario Speedwagon, it, it's it's ingrained. These songs are like my hands just go where they're supposed to go, you know. But sometimes I just 
and I sure, I'm sure Ted feels this too, you kind of pinch yourself when you're up there. Even at, at my age, I just, you know, I, I just enjoy, and, and I see it, uh, the, the biggest part is Ted. When I watch Ted on there, it, like I say, like he's a little kid up there, you know, for the first time. It's just, it's a, an out-of-body experience. And sometimes I just, I just look up and go, God, this is, this is amazing what we're doing. You know, we're playing music and, and you know, your, your, your amp is blasting and you got, you got the feedback going. It's just, it's, it's, it's better than sex. Right, Ted? <laughs> I don't know if Ted yes. would agree with that, like, but he might say it's a close second. Well, maybe the same. That's why, that's why I have all those guitars on stage, because I like to have a lot of sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Dave, you know, a guitar player like you that can play anything, you can play the blues and the most outrageous rock, these beautiful hit ballads by Ario Speedwagon. When we jammed on stage, most of our songs were just absolute bone-crushing throttle masters. Um, but when you, when you at achieve the musical virtuosity and the cohesiveness that you have with those great musicians in Ario, which, by the way, give the names of all those great, great bandmates of yours in Ario Speedwagon. Well, of course, there's Kevin Cronin, um, you know, has been there since, uh, God, I think 71 or something. And, yep. and, uh, Neil... I was there when he first joined the band. Yeah. 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 And uh, Neil Doughty, who started the band in college, probably in 1968. He's... In Champaign, Illinois. Yeah. In yeah. Illinois, yeah. And he's been, he's been in, in no other band in his entire career. Just Aria Speedway. Never played with any other band. He, so he is the president of Aria Speedwagon since 1968, I believe, maybe 67. Awesome, awesome. Uh, unbelievable. Unbel and he's still, he's still playing great. He, you know, he looks great. He's 74 years old now, I think. Or maybe. Wow, I, I'll have to respect my elders then. Yeah, 74. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's uh, Bruce Hall, who's been there since about 76, joined in about 76. A great bass player, good friend of mine, a sweetheart of a guy, great bass player. And, uh, you know, I joined in uh, 89 with Brian Hitt. Brian Hitt joined in 89. So the, the five guys have been together since uh, 89. Same guys. That's great. And every night's a damn riot, isn't it? Oh, it, it's great. I, I, I just think, it's, how can it get any better? But it, it seems to, to, to get better. You know what I mean? Well, how, so how are you dealing with interruptus raucous in the Chinese communist virus hell zone of 2020? I bet you guys have canceled a shitload of gigs, and it's a pisser, isn't it? We had 80 shows this year. In 80? 80 booked, and we did about a dozen. About a dozen, and then they just they sent us home on Friday the 13th of March. Friday yeah, the 13th. that figures. We That's flew crazy. Home. We canceled that. They were supposed to have a show that night. We waited till one o'clock in the afternoon, and then they said, "No, we gotta. That's it. We gotta go home." So it, it's horrible. It's it, I, I can't stand it. I and mean, playing at home is one thing, but you gotta get on the stage and what? some people, you know. So Dave, what's your favorite Ario song and solo to play? People in the chat room are at. They're asking for all kinds of requests. But what's your sort of favorite wheelhouse for the Ario catalog? Well, I mean, I like I, I like them. I like them all, but. I can really step out in Bruce Hall's uh, uh, Back on the Road, a song called Back on the Road, because it's really just, you know. Uh, <laughs> it almost reminds me of Ted. <laughs> um, and I can do, you know, Gary, that's all basically Gary did, you know, and he played just off the cuff solo. So I can do, I can put myself into that one a lot. And it's a pretty long song. So I got a pretty long solos in that. And I, uh, you know, I, I can step out a little bit for me, you know, other than like, I can't fight this feeling. You got to play the song, you know, uh, the way, it, you know, it was written. It's a beautiful solo and uh, I'd be, you know, uh, stupid to play it, you know, and, you know, like start riffing out on that. It'd be, it'd be dumb, you know, but I mean, but I love doing that as well, but I can step out in a couple of, or maybe um, Golden Country. That's an old Ario song from way back when, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a old you know psychedelic song you know that they wrote in the uh maybe 60s and 70s early 70s and i can step out of that you know i got a wah-wah pedal like i can kind of do my thing on that one 
You know, John, I hear from everybody. I'm on Facebook every day and I wander the streets of America and people are always coming up to me. They want to celebrate the music. They want to celebrate the conservatives, we the people, hell raising politics. And I have a great rapport, but I hear from many, many people around the country. Now, John just asked you what was your favorite ARIA songs. You, you, you properly responded to all of them and you mentioned a couple. But, John, one of the questions I are not, it's not really a question. Uh, people come up to me with big, big open eyes eyes and bugging eyes out and they go I saw Ario last night and guess what song they played so the question I would ask you Dave is um other than Ario songs what's your favorite song to play on stage <laughs> well you yeah, but this is a this is a come out here because Kevin sometimes we, we play strangle hole at the end of the you know Kevin <laughs> <laughs> You know, Kevin, if, if, you know, if we do it like three in a row and Kevin is maybe his, his voice, or maybe we're in Michigan. Every time, we're, pretty much every time we're in Michigan, he said, comes up to me and says, you want to do it? I'm, sure, I'll do it, you know? So, and, so we and play. And Dave, play, Dave plays it great. And the band plays it great. I close my eyes and I don't see any white guys. I see nothing but <laughs> Motown Funk Brothers and the James Brown Famous Flames. Because, you know, these guys have had so many hit records. How many records has Ario sold, Dave? Oh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, 30 or 40 million, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think so. My head here, they got one for 10 million for high infidelity, got 10 million a few years ago. Wow, yeah. how about that, huh? 10 million, yeah, for, our, uh, for high infidelity. So there's one at 10 million. In, uh, you know, I've seen so many uh, uh, live recordings on television. They, they air these performances. I've seen you guys at Red Rocks. Of course, we played so many shows together, and I always watch you guys. And uh, the band is so tight. They're so dedicated to deliver the ultimate show. My band and I forever have always said every gig is the most important gig in the world. Every lick is the most important lick in the world. Yeah. And that's really how you guys approach every night, isn't it? I mean, you, you just can't wait to charge that stage, and you want to make sure you deliver the beast every night, don't you? Absolutely. Well, I came from the Nugent School of Rock. I mean, you, you know, you, you were a training ground for, you know, look, look at how many guys were in your, you know, that you picked that went on to do other things. It was a real camp of, you know, a lot of people don't know that about you. Maybe they do, but but I, I learned from you, you know, to watch you every night in, in the 80s, you know, to, I, I remember at the Philadelphia Spectrum, I, I remember that like it was yesterday. So do I. You came, you came out there with your, um, you know, like a, a Roger Daltrey, you know, had the, all the frills on it, your, 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 your right, right. Uh, like, fringe, my fringe jacket, yeah. Your yeah, fringe jacket, yeah. And you came out there, and we had the uh, the Birdland on on a on a cable to come down, to come down from the rafters. Yeah, that was Seating crazy. back, screaming like a wounded rhino. It was and awesome. Coming down, and you're like you know, you're like this. It's coming down. It's coming down. And you take it off, and you you know you just you get a lot. You hit an acorn. <laughs> Hit an A chord and the people go the Berserko. He, he, he hit it one chord and he went <laughs> Berserko. I'm like <laughs> goosebumps one. on the arm. And I was like, oh my God, that's, I mean, talk about control. And uh, Ted, you, you know, unbelievable. unbelievable. And the thing about a bird land, I've only got a little lamp in the, in the barn here. But it, Like most nights, I blow things up. Well, Dave, I got to tell you, um, we've had we've had some of the most respected and revered musicians in the world on this Spirit Campfire, and and we could just talk about music all the time, but there's so much that music represents. It really represents a soundtrack to people's lives, and it's an escape. In order for you to stay so focused, I've got my bows and arrows in my swamps, and I got my dogs, and I got my children's charities that I do. What does Dave Amato do? Because we we both know we've lost so many guys. We lost Gary Richrath. I've always articulated knowingly that whether it's a comedian or an artist or an actor, and there's so many tragedies, they didn't have an escape, and they thought the drugs and the alcohol were the way to escape. What does Dave Amato do? Because you're such a down-to-earth guy. I think the ultimate compliment you can give someone, and I give it to Dave all the time, is down-to-earth, grounded, that you can have, you can have a conversation, you can have, you can have a dinner with him, you can bullshit and have fun. What do you do? Because the music, it can 
it can drive you nuts because it's so m much a part of us. What does Dave Amato do other than call Bobby Quant and harass him? We'll talk about Bobby Quant in a minute. Here. He's, a, he's a road manager. He's the world most respected road manager. And I trained him from Downriver Detroit in 1971. And uh, he's gone on to be the greatest, most, most efficient and getting the job done road manager. And he's a dear friend of Dave's and I. But what do you do, Dave, to escape the bombast? Because the music, every city, a new hotel, another gig, travel, air playing buses what do you do to get the hell out of that vortex i stay in it i i collect guitars i collect guitars and amplifiers that's i swear to God, i was in my locker today today just uh, getting another an, another guitar you know i have always uh, or fixing get another pickups uh, pafs i've been collecting old guitars vintage vintage guitars i've been going what are your favorite guitars what's your favorite collector item that you have that you've gotten I got a 59 Les Paul. I know Ted had two. Yeah, see, the thumbs up. Ted had two in the heyday. And I mean, they're just, now they're just they're a ridiculous price. I mean, $250,000, $350,000 or Jeez. more, whatever. For, um, so I turned down, I turned down uh, $350,000 for my 58 and my 59 just a couple years ago. And I've been, I've been offered a half a million dollars for one of my original yeah. bird lens because they're such a unique and un, uh, you know kind of iconic classic and i'm the only guy that really turned them into a rock and roll animal and so these the and by the way a les paul in 1959 219 dollars 95 cents unbelievable yes and now they're worth I, I didn't i think one i think um uh the guy from kiss uh Ace Fraley's, I think his went for nine hundred thousand wow. dollars. It's, it's 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 insane. So last year, I, I I've had I've got a whole bunch of juniors and and Les Pauls, and but I didn't have the Holy Grail. They always said to me, you know, you don't have the Holy Grail. I talked to Bonamassa too. Bonamassa's got about at least a dozen of them, maybe even fourteen. It's insane. What the hell? I've been to his house. It's it's it, 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 absolutely inspiring. You know, so. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't compete with that, but I got a pretty good collection. I got a really, really good collection. Oh, going. I didn't oh, have bad. that Holy Grail that you had two of and, you know, way back when that I, that you let me play. That was just from then on, it wrecked me. So, I mean, and over the, you know, I, I come up, they were, you know, maybe 50 grand, 75 grand, a hundred grand. I'm like, I can't, you know, at the time, I'm like, I, I can't do that right now. But you know, since I've been 30 years around, I'm like, just looking around, but I wasn't going to spend that. So I put. I put some feelers out for the powers to be, you know, I said, I want, I want one, but I got to have some with issues. It's got to be a little bit less. So and this is the first time I'm going to tell somebody really, I got a, I got a message from, from my guy that I put feelers out. Paul Stanley was selling his, his burst and he was looking for another one. So I'm like, Oh, come on. Huh? I, you know, Paul Stanley can ask anything he wants, you know, come on. And he goes, no, I think he doesn't play it that way with his vintage stuff. You know, he's gonna, he's gonna do it right. So, he said, I'll have him call you. I said, yeah, okay, whatever. He called me. Wonderful guy. Amazing, amazing guy. What a, what a career. He's, yeah, come on. So, um, and I bought, I bought his Les Paul off of him. He, 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 awesome. didn't try, he, he said, Dave, I'm going to, I'm going to charge you basically when I got into it. I go, I'm in Paul. He just did Good for you. Well, now that, now that we've scared the living shit out of everybody getting $350,000 guitars, go ahead and, I mean, I really believe nowadays, and you see a lot of these young kids playing these outrageous guitar licks. I mean, they really practice their asses off. They're playing stuff that when you and I were growing up, nobody played like that. Influenced combination of Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen and all the unlimited dynamics of guitar licks and guitar styles. What do you, what, I know you, we don't practice per se, we just play, but when you're not on the road with Ario, what kind of stuff do you play? Are you writing songs? Are you coming up with new ideas? And do you, do you create new patterns? Do you intentionally seek new licks and new noises? I just, you know, I, I get into this room here. There's a bunch of Marshall, little Marshall practice amps in here. And, you know, how you, we just come up with, like, you know, you're, you're just jamming on something. And all of a sudden you come up with, like, oh, hey, that's kind of kind of, kind of a cool lick. You know, let me let me uh, just try to maybe put it in my phone or something. Just, I don't know, maybe give it to Kevin, see if he wants to, you know, write some words to it or, or whoever, you know, just. But I, I just, like, you you know, just tinker around and, 
and fool around with some some riffs and you go like wow like and then the next night you come in like what was that riff i want to do it again you know just i don't know just amusing using ourselves here you know in lockdown so what, i think the most important thing i'm gonna a... use go ahead john sorry yeah, what what gauge strings do you use and what kind of pick do you like to use uh, i'm i'm nines uh i i've been dean with dean markley but right now i think they're defunct but they started up again i don't know what's going on now with this you know with the virus who who's open and what's not you know um uh dean markley since 83 since uh, since ted i got the endorsement with ted you know i just wow. been I, I when i'm i'm pretty loyal i'm really loyal to what you know what i use you know i i don't divert you know that try this let's try this let's try this you know whatever um i'm, I'm a less you know less paul guy i have fenders too of course and um uh, dean markley strings nines uh, nine through 42 and um so dave would that be would that be would that be 9 11 13 uh 24 34 42 30, something like 32, that 32 40 i think that the uh, g string is a 16 i think okay Nine wow my my g strings um the shemaine's wearing one right now i wish you could see her it's just awesome yeah. um uh <laughs> I should have... I'm gonna I'm gonna have to tune that up. Uh, I use I use a GHS made right here in Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh, Not only are they world class strings, but they're in a place called Battle Creek, and I love the name Battle Creek. Anyhow, I use a 10, 12, 15, 24, 34, 44 most of the time. Oh, okay, so it's real that. close, real like, close. Yeah. Um, the Dean Markley Factory used to be in uh, in Michigan. But then yeah. it, it changed, uh, Dean sold the company and then they went, uh, whatever. But So I, Dave, don't you think it's true? And John, as a guitar player yourself, I think the best advice we can give with all these world-class guitarists that we've had on, and we've alluded to it with Vic Johnson, with Billy Gibbons and Ricky Medlock, and uh, we had Mark Farner on, Dave. It was just awesome. Oh, I had Jason and Greg on. Uh, we had Mitch Ryder on. Are you kidding oh, me? Awesome. Awesome. So we've had a great campfire, but I, I, both of you guys, John and Dave, since we love music and we love the adventure of finding new uncharted licks and patterns and rhythms, isn't it true that if you want to be a great virtuoso, not just dr guitar, but drums, keyboards, saxophone, whatever, it's just about mileage. You gotta, you gotta be with the instrument, not an hour a day, maybe an hour, then have lunch and come back and do it again for an hour. You're yeah. only going to discover your identity if you, if you crave it enough. You have to crave it because you have to play all the time to find these licks. Yep. Yes. And, and it, 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 you know, it takes time too. You, you put the time in. You know, and and you'll you'll get there. And, and Right now, you can't because it's locked up. But if the guy down the street, as, as a young kid, the guy down the street wants to wants to jam a little bit, go jam. Check it yeah. out. You know, go go play with other people. Mix it in. You know, learn how to play with other people. You know, I mean, now it's kind of tough. But you know, when when you kid, I don't know what the kids do now. You know, but we used to. You know, as you, we jam down the street with the, you know the drum. Find a drummer. Find another guitar player. A guy playing bass, and and you go jam with other people and it's and, a, what's really interesting is you guys I, I i don't know if anybody has the nerve to ask you hey will you teach me guitar but i've had a i've actually taught a ton of people to play guitar and i great. i actually learned from a guy named louis denslow who played thrash metal like that was his sort of bass and he became a classical musician from that um but what's interesting is you know the learning of licks and sort of the the licks that make up the blues bible and you know sort of the even the jazz bible it's interesting how when you take those licks and play them just at a different cadence and a different rhythm and keep those notes and add a passing note it becomes something unique and original all on its own there's so many songs that are playing the same thing just slightly different yeah. it's, it's really interesting to me how close everything is but how far apart it ends up being well, you know, when you're playing in the key of A, the, there's your A chords on the fifth fret. You can. You can play all those, but if you're in the key of A, I like to start elsewhere. You, 
but you're only going to find licks if you just get in. The, I get in the barn with the dogs every day. There's, right now, they're sound asleep. They look like they're dead because I wore them out today. I think it was, I think they overdosed on squirrels. That's what's happening. Uh, 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 it's squirrel so season. You, you, you need to get an amp to get, or a guitar that feels good. I, I was going to mention a minute ago, you don't need a $100,000 guitar. You don't need a $3,000 PRS. You don't need an expensive anything. Get a guitar. It can be, you know, an Epiphone. It can be an inexpensive guitar as long as you can touch it and feel. And if it feels right, and find an amp that... Find one that responds and just stick with it. That's it. Find places that 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 aren't aren't. I, everybody asks me what scales I use, and I go, I got one scale. It's what I weigh my deer with. I don't know any scales. I probably bump into them on occasion because I'm all over the damn neck. But you listen to the guitar solo in Stranglehold. And what's that? Forty years ago. I mean, Amazing. what is this? <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what that was. That, In fact, I've said it before, and Dave, you've heard this story, and John, you've heard it. The solo on the original Stranglehold was take one, and I had never played any of those licks before. I had to go back and learn it because it was so organic. And that's that out-of-body shit. So you, it, it, it didn't happen that moment. That moment came from, I'm guessing, millions of hours. I don't know how many hours there are in a year, but uh, playing my guitar forever, you find in that in that geography of the guitar neck, all of a sudden you find noises and semitones that represent something you're feeling. So you gotta, you gotta let yourself go and go and go, and then you might become Eddie Van Halen someday. But, but then yeah. it comes, it comes out of you, like that. Uh, the, the stranglehold thing was out of you, out of your, you know, your body, and translated to the strings of the guitar. That Absolutely. was you, you know, you know feeling it. You know, Dave, we call this the, the spirit campfire because we're open. As, I mean, campfires are where everybody is uninhibited and they just are totally honest and unfiltered. But ultimately, it, with an instrument, and I learned from Junior Walker and the All-Stars and so many killer musicians that I've been able to, so honored to jam with, but you, you're not going to get it if you don't sacrifice, if you don't, you have to give up some things to stick with the instrument. And if you stick with the instrument, all of a sudden, your spirit comes out in notes. I really believe that. Yeah. Don't you think there's too many distractions now? You know, for I, I'm talking about kids coming up. You know, now we're, we, you know, internet, everything's fast. Go oh, come over here, your cell phones, your blah, blah, blah. I mean, we, we didn't have that. So we, we picked up the guitar. <laughs> And we, we we took hours. We played it. We had nothing else to do. You know, you go out and play in the woods for an hour, and then you come back and, like you say, take lunch, and, and you pick up the guitar. <laughs> There's nothing Dave can't do, John. He's really one yeah. of the greatest. And not only that, but you learn. And, and what Dave will tell you is that the reason REO was so effective as a as a an impacting musical force, because they're all nice guys. They have a work ethic. They get along. They don't have any drama. They just want to make great music. No, and not all you know, nobody's into drugs. No, you know, all that stuff went away. You know, in the eighties, whatever. Everybody's, you know. Uh, they're riding their bikes. They're eating better. You know, it, it, it's, it's all you know. You know, the eighties were like, yeah, but not with us, but with us, some other bands. You know. But well, you tell Kevin. You tell Kevin. I'm on. I, I want him on the Spirit Campfire because I, I, I'm going to tell you, Dave. If you take a message from Uncle Ted to Ario Speedwagon, let me tell you something. You guys are sexy. You guys got some sexy damn music. But if you want to get really, really sexy as a band, you got to go squirrel hunting together. I'm telling you. <laughs> Something about limb rat, something about fricassee, something about squirrel on the grill, squirrel fricassee. It'll make you play sexier guitar licks. I think that was Howlin' Wolf. I know Howlin' Wolf ate squirrel fricassee. I know it for a fact. Well, I'll tell you what, that I did eat with you. I've never wild boar bacon. Yes! The wild boar bacon, right? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I, I slept at Ted's house, you know, in the 80s. And he goes, hey, Amatsky, I'm going to the hen house and getting some eggs. Well, some, you want some eggs? I'm like, well, sure. He got the high. He goes, how about some wild boar bacon? I went, I'm not sure about that, Ted. He goes, no, you, you're going to like it. You're going to like it. I loved it. Every day, I went, Ted, some more wild boar bacon. Never had wild boar bacon. That was amazing. Basically. Well, wild boar bacon, John, you know, everybody getting organic. Well, hello, welcome to the party. But wild, you know, wild pigs, they eat roots and they, they're foragers. They eat all the nuts. Well, what would make better meat than nuts and buds and plantains and forbs and herbs? I'm telling you, wild boar meat with that white fat, the white fat is like candy. And when you kill the pigs that we kill, we're, in fact, I'll be guiding here at our Sunrise Acres all all fall every weekend people literally go gaga when they get their first taste of natural wild boar bacon because it's literally the candy of the gods i'll leave it at that dave amato i'm so glad you're here at the spirit okay. campfire john i bet you there's a lot of feedback i bet people love having dave on people, people are going nuts we have our i mean honestly the, everyone's just going nuts saying where they saw ario the first time they heard ario uh, just, just a total thing man too. just know like there are I mean, right now we have a giant audience and everybody's tuning in and just loving every, like hanging on every word. Listen, so hang in there for John, 2020 to get by us and then everybody will be waiting for you. John, let, let, me, let, me, just, let me just say, I, I, Ted, I, I love him. We're, we're blood brothers. I, he's my friend. He, he's a Hall of, I, I, I can say I played with a Hall of Famer. I know, you know, about the other, all the, all the BS, but to me, Ted Nuge is a Hall of Famer. He's got to be. I mean, look at all the stuff. He's amazing. And he taught me a lot. A lot. Well, thanks, right. Dave. You know, you, are, you know, we we do use the word blood brothers, not just musically, but as as men who give a damn. So, Dave, thanks for joining the campfire. I give my best to the all those Ario Speedwagon animals, and uh, let's keep in touch and take Bobby Quan out to dinner some night, man. Uh, I love Bobby Quan. Yeah, that's it. I got Bobby Quan from you too. I love it. Yeah. All good. Awesome. All good. Thanks, thanks guys. Dave. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Dave. I love you, buddy. I love you, too, man. Love you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Ted, Do here's I have the... Great uh, friends, Brankus, or what, huh? Yeah, dude, I mean, everybody that you have on the show, here's the thing, is every week, you keep having on people, and you keep saying, hey, we were clean and sober, and they're, they're, we're really one of a kind, and then next week, you have somebody else. Hey, we were clean and sober, we're one of a kind. Like, here you are. You're raising hell your whole life, hanging out with a bunch of sober people. You know, I really do. I have, you know, I think, and I know that mankind is inclined to escape the turmoil. Nobody gets out of here alive. And right now, I'd like to end this uh, program here tonight on the 10th of August, 2020. Once again, to say thank you, John, for creating this spirit campfire with me and Dash and all the guys that make it happen technically. And especially to all those people that I hear from on Facebook afterwards. I mean, the celebration of the best of the best, because all the attitude, it's taught physics of spirituality with attitude. Believe me, John, the attitude across this country is not depicted in those heartbreaking images on television where we see rioting and we see a lot of hate. It does exist and it's always existed, but I wanna thank everybody for keeping my life so buoyant, so positive, so upbeat on the streets of Texas and now on the streets of Michigan. And a big salute to Greg Smith and Jason Hartless and Doug Banker and Linda Peterson, my entire crew, my family, my wife, Shemaine, and everybody out there. I, I mentioned my, my family because my band is my family. Dave Amato's my family. My crew is my family. These guys, they care about the music. They want to make the greatest show every night and not being able to tour this year has been a major pain in the ass, but we are gonna improvise, adapt, and overcome. But I'd like to end it by playing the national anthem. I was just in Virginia, and Virginia's going through some real pain right now with uh, corrupt politicians like we are here in Michigan and so many places. But there's a spirit out there, John, where we're gonna overcome all this negativity that we see thrashing yep. in Chicago and the shootings, 20 shot in Washington, D.C., and nobody's even reporting it because they're interested in whether you're wearing a mask or not. So all I can say is pray for each other, pray to each other, and it doesn't have to be a sign of the cross. It doesn't have to be an Our Father or Hail Mary. It can be how you treat each other. Yeah.
Um, yep. it, it, Ted, it, I love, the, really I love what you're saying. Well. Everyone's going nuts in the in in the chat room because everyone's saying nothing but positive energy. And I and I I I honestly believe this. Regardless of anyone's political affiliation or religious affiliation, I think we have to love our way out of this. I think that love does end up conquering all. And on both sides of the political spectrum, on the fringe, where you kind of like say, look, that's the fringe. We're like, well, all that we're seeing dealing with are the fringe of the fringe of the fringe. And what we need to do is come together, love each other, and allow your actions to be your prayers. That's the truth. I think if we can, we can't just grab love out of uh, a, a, a random abstract. We have to demand it. There's a lot of non-love out there. There's a lot of hate out there. So my recommendation is to be sure you're in touch with your family and friends. Keep that love springing forth from your inner core people. Let it spread out. Reach out to people who might not get the importance of positive energy and spirit. Try to help educate them that being more more golden rule with each other, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But more importantly than ever, John, we the people of America, we have the only experiment in self-government in the history of mankind. And it will only work if good Americans are engaged. And the only way it's gonna work, you can't just think love, you gotta tell your elected employees that good, loving people should be rewarded, and people that are hating and destroying, they need to, they need to be forced to stop this stuff. So I will play a national anthem like I did for the great Senator Amanda Chase and Kip and Cat Campbell and Joe Crouch and his family in, uh, in uh, Virginia just a couple days ago. And because I was surrounded by military heroes, some of them that sacrificed their legs, sacrificed their arms, some sacrificed their skin, John, and they're staying strong. We're going to have a great United States uh, Green Beret Special Forces hero, Greg Stubbe, on the show coming up soon. And he's so motivating. How he beat death, I'll never know. But when I play the national anthem surrounded by those kinds of guys, it's why there has a lot of fire in my plane. So I'd like to play that right now and say goodnight to everybody. And get ready for hopefully on Thursday, we'll get Wayne Kramer of the MC5. Or maybe Derek St. Holmes from Down River.
We had a lot of people standing up, lighting a match, clapping their hands, saluting the flag. A lot of positive energy out there. And I'll tell you what, Ted, it's working. Everyone's staying positive. That's all I care about. Everyone's I'll staying see every, positive. I'll see it. Smile on the face. I'll see everybody at UncleTed2020.com. And, John, I'll see you Thursday. And we'll keep the uh, positive tsunami flowing, my friend. God bless you. All righty. God bless, guys. Peace. Live it up.